buffering capacity, our next topic in our buffering lesson, talks about the pH of a bus buffered solution being determined by the ratio of the base over its parent acid. The conjugate base over acid ratio helps us determine a buffered solution's pH range. When I think of the term capacity, how much can be added to a system that's been buffered before I overcapacitate? In other words, think of this as a sponge. A sponge fills eventually. If I'm pouring in strong acid or a strong base to a buffered solution, it has a certain capacity, a certain amount of acid or base it can absorb before pH begins to swing, but I can overcapacitate if I pour in too much. Just as a sponge holds a certain amount of water, a buffered solution has a certain capacity before pHs go out of whack. So as long as this doesn't change much, the pH won't change much. This ratio of A negative to HA, the base over acid. The more concentrated these two are, the more hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion the solution will be able to absorb. So the larger the concentrations, the bigger the buffer capacity. Oh, and then I wrote that twice. Larger concentrations equal a larger buffering capacity. In other words, in our bar graph, if I have a conjugate pair of an acid and base of this amount, and I compare that capacity to a conjugate acid-base pair in that amount, I will have a larger capacity the more concentrated the buffering solution is. So let's take a look over a pH range where the pH range over the buffering really acts effectively. So if a pH range over which the buffer acts effectively can be calculated, it's simply by looking at the ratio of HX when it's directly equal to X negative. Again, visually, it makes sense to have an equal sized bar graph where HX is equal to the amount of X negative. This would be the optimal pH range it would not make sense to create a buffering solution where I have a small amount of one partner compared to the other. This would get consumed much faster than this would. So what we're saying is an optimal pH range is one where we begin with the buffering capacity of equal amounts. Alrighty. The optimal pH of a buffer is when the pH is directly equal to the pKa. And that, again, just simplifies the ratio. So thinking back to an equation we wrote earlier, if H plus can be found, and ultimately pH, by knowing the Ka times the concentration of the acid over base, if this ratio holds those two values the same, Ka and H plus are indeed equal, pKa and H and pH are indeed the same. So this target here, where pH and pKa are indeed the same, gives us the optimal buffer. So try to select a buffer whose acid form has a pKa close to the desired pH. Knowing that a buffering capacity will give us a range of plus or minus one pH unit of the pKa. So let's think this through. If the optimal pH of a buffered solution containing acetic acid and sodium acetate, what is that optimal pH? All we would need to do is say the optimal pH is when we have that equal to pKa. So I'll simply take the negative log of the Ka value for acetic acid given to us in the problem as 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And that will tell us the optimal pH that this particular series could buffer. And when I hit that, negative log 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, I find 4.74. So what that's telling us with acetic acid and sodium acetate, it is an ideal buffering system that has a pH range within plus or minus one unit. So acetic acid with its conjugate base acetate 
is a buffering system with a pH range of 4.74 plus 1 unit and minus 1 unit. If we think about a buffering system as adding a strong acid or a strong base and determining what effect it has on the stoichiometry. If we add strong acid or strong base in terms of our bar graph, we saw that some of the acid would get consumed or some would get used depending upon what we added. So we have to consider the stoichiometry first. Understand a strong base will grab protons from the weak acid. It will reduce the concentration of the acid. So base plus acid will get consumed. The strong acid will add its proton to the anion of its salt, producing more of the acid and reducing the conjugate A negative. We then use the Henderson-Hasselbalch for our equation. Let's make sense of this with a visual. Let me grab a piece of paper. You might choose to draw this as well, just in a side margin would work fine. Let's suppose I have a buffering system and I have equal amounts of HX and X negative. Perhaps you like to think of HA or A negative, but it's a conjugate acid base pair. Let's suppose we add strong acid. And we could denote that strong acid with the same symbols as HX. All right. A buffered system comes from a weak acid and its conjugate pair, and we're going to add strong acid to that system. We would understand that the acid reacts with a base. The acid that we're adding reacts with a base. So the base, the X negative from the buffered system, reacts with the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion from your strong acid forming more acid, HX. When we add an acid to a buffered solution, we produce more of the acid from the buffered solution. Or Perhaps to our buffered solution, we add strong base. And we can denote that simply by OH negative, adding a strong base. Consider the stoichiometry of what's happening. A base that's been added to a buffered system will react with the acid from the buffer. So the acid, HX, plus our base, OH negative, allows a proton transfer. X negative forms and neutral water. HX is the conjugate acid from the buffer being added with a strong base. So what's happened? We see a strong base reduces the amount of acid and produce more of the conjugate base. After we consider the stoichiometry, we recalculate. Recalculate the values of HX that have been produced and the X negative. And now solve for the pH. This little flow chart helps us see visually how to calculate a buffered solution problem. We begin with a known amount of a buffered system, HX and its conjugate base. We could either add acid and follow that producing more acid, or we could add strong base to produce more base X negative. We'll then recalculate and solve for the pH. This flowchart approach helps us solve buffering problems. So back to the notepad page. Adding a strong acid or strong base, we consider the stoichiometry first. And that's all I really said in a, in a visual. We're going to consider the stoichiometry to find out how much acid or base is left after we've had our reaction. And then off to the Henderson-Hasselbalch to calculate pH. Let's take a look at a model problem. Calculating pH changes in buffers. A buffer is made by adding 0.3 mole acetic acid 
to 0.3 moles of sodium acetate. So here's our acid and its conjugate base. So visually, this is the system that we're starting with, 0.3 moles of each of the acid and its conjugate base. We add it to make a one liter solution, which is simply saying the molarity. The pH of the buffer is 4.74 units. So let's calculate the pH of the solution after adding 0 0.02 moles of our strong base NaOH. Let's figure out what's happening if we add a strong base, OH negative, to our buffering solution, the base reacts with the acid. Adding the strong base takes us on this journey to consider the stoichiometry. We know that the base ion reacts with the conjugate acid, and in this example, that's acetic acid, HC2H3O2. When we see that, we know that a proton is transferred to give us water and the acetate ion, C2H3O2 negative. Before our reaction, we had 0.3 molar solution of acetic acid, and we had a 0.3 molar solution of the acetate coming from sodium acetate. We also work out the concentration of the base. The base was given to us as 0 0.02 molar, so we also have 0 0.02 molar as the concentration of hydroxide. 0 0.02 molar, 0 0.3 molar, and 0.3 molar are before they react. What's left after? Well, let's consider the hydroxide here definitely looks like the limiting reagent. It will be consumed throughout our experiment, and reactants get used as products get made. So this goes down by a value of 0 0.02 molar, giving us a net of 0 molar. It will also consume a value of O2 molar from the acid. So after the reaction is complete, we're down to 0.28 molar concentration. We started with 0.3 molar of acetate, but it was made to 0.02 molar additional units. So after the equation, we have a 0.32 molar solution. What we've said is the acid went down in the same amount that the base went up. Once we've done the stoichiometry first, we simply plug it in to the henderson hasselbeck Alrighty. So pH is found by taking the negative log of the Ka, which for acetic acid we had to look up in Ka value for appendix D is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So reminding ourselves of the henderson hasselbeck the negative log of Ka, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. The base here had a concentration of 0.32 molar, and the acid was reduced down to 0.28 molar. The pH of the buffer is set 4.74. That could be 10 to the negative. 4.74 gave us Ka value then, or we could look it up with appendix D. The purpose of telling you the pH of the buffer initially, 4.74, is so we can compare what happened to the original pH after we added the strong base. So the 4.74 really doesn't play a role setting it equal to pH.